Howdy my totally tubular gamers, we're back with another video. So today we're talking about 2024. The year's starting to wrap up, people are starting to reflect and look over what they played, maybe their favorite games, their favorite movies, the biggest shit they took this year, their favorite moments of the year, etc, etc. And so what I want to talk to you all about today are some of the best games I played in 2024. While I still am playing through a number of games, I'm really trying to play as many games from this year as possible. I think 2024 was actually a very good year for gaming. There was a lot of amazing games that came out this year, and I got a bunch of fun videos planned for 2024, but today I wanted to share with you some of my absolute favorites of this year. The best of the best, the cream of the crop, those games that get the elusive 10 out of 10. Now, what does 10 out of 10 mean to me personally? I feel like it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. A 10 out of 10 means I can give you my absolute highest recommendation of the game. If you breathe air, I'm going to recommend the game to you, and I think you are going to enjoy it. That is what a 10 out of 10 is to me. A 10 out of 10 is not a perfect video game. A perfect video game does not exist. All of the games I'm about to discuss, I could point at them and tell you something wrong with it, a negative, a con, a flaw, etc, etc. I'm working on a much larger, bigger, top 30, 40, 50 games of 2024, but today, I just wanted to share with you some of the highest tier games I played in 2024. So yeah, we're going to be talking about those 10 out of 10 experiences. Obviously, all of this is just my own opinion. I have my own personal tastes, and my opinion is just as valid as yours. You might have completely different tastes. You might agree, disagree. Either way, you can let me know down below what have been some of your favorite games of 2024. What have been some of your personal 10 out of 10s? No matter what, I'm going to be lurking down below. Let's get a discussion going. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. We got the super thanks and the Patreon. Any support is truly, like, truly greatly appreciated. Seriously, major shout out to all my patrons. Thank you all so very much. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to the games. We're going to start out with a fun one. Here we have Astrobot. I knew from the moment I initially saw this game that it was going to be something special, and it absolutely is. This game is a sequel to Astro's Playroom, the PS5 pack-in title that was way better than it had any right to be. That's like the best pack-in title ever, and after I beat it, I was like, man, I want a full game of this. I bet it would be incredible, and yeah, that's what this game is. It's essentially a full game of Astro's Playroom, but it goes way crazier than Playroom ever went. This is... Just a fantastic 3D platformer through and through. It has you playing as Astrobot, seeing you go through dozens upon dozens of levels trying to rescue all the other Astrobots, get the ship parts back, and to defeat that scummy alien. This is just a fun, lighthearted adventure. Sure, the story isn't the most gripping, and it doesn't have some deep, thought-provoking narrative, but when it comes to the gameplay, the presentation, and just how much fun I had with this game, Oh, this is one of the best games of the entire year. Like, it was such a blast. From the moment I started it, I really couldn't put it down. It was all I wanted to play. They really nailed every single aspect of this game. The game looks incredible. It has a great art style. The environments look fantastic. The animation is amazing. It really looks like a Pixar movie out here. The controls, oh, the controls are just perfection. This is one of the best feeling, best controlling 3D platformers of all time. When it comes to Astro's moveset, while at first it might seem really basic, they are constantly mixing things up, giving you fun little gimmicks and attachments that do a really good job at keeping things fresh. And speaking of fresh, we have the level design. The level design is excellent in this game. No two levels feel alike. They all do something different. They all have their own unique identity. They're all engaging, and no level overstays its welcome. I think they're all a great length. The game in general is a great length. While it might take around 10 to 15 hours to complete, it does not waste your time at all. It is straight to the point, and it really is just a joy to play through from start to finish. The game also has some really great collectibles with tons, tons of fan service to not only PlayStation, but gaming in general. There is very, very few games I want 100%, especially at this stage in my life where I just am trying to play as many games as possible, but Astrobot, it was one of those games. So I 100%ed it, and I don't regret it. It was absolutely worth it. This is not only one of my favorite 3D platformers of all time, but this is like the best game PlayStation has put out in years. The game is charm, personality, it's incredibly memorable. It reminds me of a bygone era from older PlayStation titles, and... It reminded me why I love gaming as much as I do. I can't recommend this game enough, even if you don't really like platformers or this style of game. I still think you're going to be able to enjoy this one. At the very least, I'm sure everybody will enjoy all of the fun cameos and references. Seriously, there are some really, really deep cuts in this game. And it might be the best fan service I've ever seen in a game outside of a Smash Brothers game. The fan service alone gets a 10 out of 10, but there's also a fantastic game here. 
So here we got one you probably saw coming, especially if you know me and my interests. We have Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Now, I love the Like a Dragon Yakuza series. I've been a fan of this series for well over 10 years, and it very well might be my favorite series in all of gaming. And Infinite Wealth, it absolutely did not disappoint. After the amazing Yakuza Like a Dragon, I could not wait to see where they took the story, where Ichiban would go next, and the fact that it was actually going to take place in Hawaii, oh, I was crazy hyped for this game, it was easily my most hyped game of the year, and in my opinion, this game totally delivered. The story is really great in this game, it is a follow up from the previous game and it sees Ichiban going to Hawaii for reasons, and getting involved in a lot, like a lot of shit, and Kiryu shows up as well, he's got his own story here, it really plays off like the last 10 games. If you're a fan of the series, oh yeah, this game has a ton of amazing fan service callbacks, throwbacks, whatever you want to call it, to all of Kiryu's adventures. Adventures. But even if you're somebody who didn't play all of the prior games, I still think you'll be able to really appreciate the story and where it goes. It certainly helps that Ichiban is one of the most likable protagonists of any video game. Seriously, he is just excellent. I know some people didn't really care for the slower pace of the story and the intro in particular, but I really like it. I like the slower pace and I like that it doesn't show all of its cards immediately. It really lets things build up and it doesn't blow its load immediately. It saves everything for some really big moments and those moments absolutely pay off. You gotta remember, a lot of this game is cutscenes and dialogue, so you would hope it would be pretty good and yeah, I think it's pretty great. And when it comes to the gameplay, oh, I just love it. The setting is pretty different from the prior games. It takes place in Hawaii and this is like the biggest map the series has ever seen, but there is still a lot of detail. There's way more detail with this map than most open world games and I found it pretty fun to explore around on the Segway. When it comes to the battle system, yeah, it's like the prior game. It is a turn-based battle system, more like a traditional JRPG. The beat-em-up gameplay, it's really not here, and while I know there are plenty of people that are sad it's not the beat-em-up gameplay, I really like the turn-based battles. Like, I love the beat-em-up gameplay too, but we've had like 10 plus games of that. It's fine to have something different, it keeps things fresh, it mixes things up, and yeah, I think this game has some of the best turn-based battles of any modern game. Like, the mechanics are way deeper than you'd expect. They actually address, like, all of my issues with the prior game. You get to actually have the characters walking around interacting with the environment. There's a bunch of different jobs for every single character and you really get to customize your party. There are so many different party members in this game and they all have different abilities, stats, personalities, traits, etc. I really just never got tired of the battles in this game. I never got tired of the music either. This game has some of the best music of any game of this year. This shit really slaps. The game has a ton of content to it. If you ignore everything, you're still looking at a 40 to 50 hour adventure, but this is one of those games where I think it really is worth doing all of the side content. It's excellent in this game. Not only do you get some really great gear and rewards, but it's just fun. Dondoko Island was awesome. Everything to do with the Sujimon was way better than you'd expect, and this game has arguably the best sub-stories of any Yakuza game. That really is saying something. Like Astrobot, this is one of those rare times I actually went out of my way to do just about everything in this game, and it took me around 90 to 100 hours, and I loved all of it. This game is not only one of my favorite games of the year, but one of my favorite turn-based RPGs of all time. I recommend it to everybody. Even if you're someone who's never been big on this franchise, I think this game might win you over. It's just, it's so good. So here we got a game you probably didn't expect, a real Jonathan pick. We have Angerfoot. Now for the unfamiliar, Angerfoot came out exclusively on PC in July. And this was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had all year. I love first person shooters, I love boomer shooters and fast paced games, and Angerfoot just goes off the chain. This game is insane, it sees you playing as the titular Angerfoot, a very angry dude who's going to kick the shit out of everybody after his favorite shoes get stolen by some evil corporation. And kicking is something you'll do a lot of in this game. Plenty of games have had kicking before, I think the most famous example is probably the Mighty Boot in Duke Nukem. But Angerfoot really takes things to a whole new level. This is one of the most powerful tools you've ever been given in a first person shooter. You can not only kick the shit out of enemies, but kick down doors, reflect certain projectiles, and you'll send just shit flying. The physics engine is great in this game. When you kick people, they go flying into the air, and it's just crazy satisfying. This is one of the most satisfying games I've played all year. From the moment I booted it up, I was like, oh yeah, 
this is great. Kicking people feels great. Seeing them go flying is awesome. And the game sets up plenty of scenarios where you just feel like this unstoppable force. Something else that really makes this game feel incredibly satisfying is that the music is actually tuned to the gameplay. As the gameplay ramps up, the music gets crazier and crazier. It's really synced up and it just leads to all these incredible moments. The level design itself really isn't even anything all that special and plenty of levels can feel similar, but the gameplay, the raw gameplay, is just so satisfying and engaging that it really just carries the entire gameplay. It is so much fun. It's also quite challenging. You die really easily in this game. So you'll be replaying these levels a lot, but it's the fun kind of replaying where you're learning enemy patterns, the level design, and eventually you can go through this entire level in under 30 seconds and you feel just completely invincible. It's a very similar feeling to Hotline Miami if you've ever played those games. This game in general is very comparable to Hotline Miami. Plenty of people have called it Hotline Miami in first person, and yeah, I agree to a certain extent, but I found this game more satisfying and even more fun than Hotline Miami. Sure, it doesn't have the deep story or goaded soundtrack of Hotline Miami, but the core moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, it is more fun in my opinion. This game also has a great style to it. This game is a pretty fun personality where it takes place in shit city and it sees you going up against all of these criminals, again, just so you can get your shoes back. The game aesthetically looks nice as well. And the game keeps things interesting with plenty of new gimmicks showing up. You get tons of different shoes and all of these do have different abilities. Some shoes are clearly better than others, but I really like how they tried to mix up the gameplay with all of these. If you're looking for a game to blow off some steam, this is the perfect game. The soundtrack and gameplay is just so incredibly aggressive and fast paced that at times it becomes difficult to see what's even going on, but man, it is so much fun in this game. The pacing is excellent. It doesn't waste any of your time. It throws you right into it. And by the time it's over, all you're going to want to do is play it again. And the game's got a little replayability to it. There are some side missions that show up here and there. You could get a solid like 10 to 12 hours out of this game. And I think it's a very enjoyable 10 to 12 hours. I highly recommend this game to everybody. Even if you like slower paced shooters or you're not even into FPS games in general, I think this game's personality, aggressive nature, and just fun gameplay will at the very least intrigue you. It really is one of my favorite games of all year and I didn't expect to like it anywhere near as much as I did, but by the time I was done with it, all I wanted to do was play it again, which is the hallmark of a great game. So here we got a game I'm sure everybody saw coming, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've made it no secret that I love Final Fantasy VII from the original game to the remake and now Rebirth. I really enjoyed the remake and I was very excited to see how things would continue and oh yeah, they definitely continued in this game. This is the second game in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy and they really step things up here. The story is just incredible in this game. The storytelling is nothing short of phenomenal. The characters are amazing, their performances are great. And this game really has some of the most likable characters of any video game. There's not a single character I dislike in this game. From Cloud and all the other party members to even some of the more random new NPCs. I even like annoying ass Chadley. The game also has just a tremendous presentation. It looks incredible. And I was just playing on a base PS5. This game is a real looker and playing it, oh, it is so good. I think the combat is nothing short of remarkable in this game. I've always really enjoyed the combat of Remake and now Rebirth where it's an action RPG, but they actually haven't totally abandoned the menus. There still is some planning and strategy elements to it, but it also really is a solid action RPG. The combat feels really nice. All of the characters play incredibly different from each other. Seriously, no two characters feel even remotely similar to each other. They all have completely unique playstyles, abilities, and team-up moves with each other. The combat, it really has a lot of depth. It has a lot of legs. I like the stagger system. There are some amazing boss fights in this game. The combat is just a joy from start to finish. And I really was just blown away with how much depth this combat has. All of the characters are just so different from each other. But the thing is, they're all incredibly fun to play as. There wasn't a single character I was like, oh, I gotta be Tifa or oh, I gotta be Aerith. No, not at all. I was happy to be any of these characters and I had a blast is legit. Every single character and I love how many different team up mechanics and moves there are here. When you're not in combat, you're exploring these big open worlds and I actually like the open world gameplay. No, this game does not reinvent the wheel or set the world on fire when it comes to its open world design and what you'll be doing in them. Climbing tall thing, collecting something or doing these little mini games, but I still found the open world activities to be very enjoyable. I know some people have complained that there's too much open world shit in this game, there's too many mini games, too many side activities, too much just everything, but I genuinely really did enjoy it all in this game. Yeah, there is a lot of it, 
but I think it really adds to the variety of this game. They're constantly keeping things interesting, mixing things up, and no two areas are alike. You also don't have to do all of the side stuff. If you stick to just the main story, you can finish it at around 40 to 45 hours, but man, doing all that side stuff, you're looking at like a 100 hour game. And yeah, this was one of those games where I wanted to do absolutely everything. It was just such a great time. I can, without hesitation, recommend this game to everybody, especially if you like RPGs or Final Fantasy. Does this game have issues? Yeah, all of these games have issues. Sometimes it goes even too slow for my liking. But I really thought it was all worth it, and the last few hours of this game go really crazy. So here we have a game that I certainly didn't expect to be on a list like this, but we have Animal Well. I really didn't have all that much interest in this game pre-release, but then I started hearing really good things about it, and I was like, okay, okay, I'll give it a shot. And then all of a sudden, six or seven hours had passed, and I was done with it. And I just went, yeah, this game is terrific, and looking back, it really is one of the best Metroidvanias I've ever played. This game is so fascinating. It was developed by just one guy, and it was published by Donkey's company Big Mode. And I gotta say, Donkey sure knows how to pick them, because this game, oh, it is just outstanding. It has so many amazing qualities to it. The game doesn't have a traditional or conventional story. They really just drop you into this world, and you're just kind of exploring. The game does have some lore and backstory to it but I wouldn't say it's anything substantial. What this game is all about is the sense of exploration. This game has one of the best senses of exploration of any video game that I've ever played, seriously. Exploring in this game is so fun. You're not really given much of an objective, you just kind of explore around and you will want to investigate every single nook and cranny. There are dozens, hundreds of secrets in this game. Every single screen in this game has a secret or two to it, and it's up to you to find them all. You get some really amazing tools in this game, like the tools you get are really great. They might seem very ordinary and even impractical, but every single one has multiple uses, like there is so much utility when it comes to the items you get. Something really fascinating about the game is that there is no combat in this game at all. It's all about the exploration, and it's all about chasing that sense of discovery, and very few games have made me want to discover every square inch of this map. And it's a really big map, but it's also quite easy to navigate and understand. You can look at it and it makes sense. It's a very intuitive map. It's an intuitive game in general. I love this game's art style also. It just evokes this really unique vibe. Like this game just has a wonderful atmosphere and aesthetic as you occasionally hear animal noises and ambient sound effects. This game is just a mood and a half. It also has great pacing and progression to it. I never found myself lost and it's really easy to figure out where you're supposed to go next. It's just where haven't I explored? And along the way, of course, you'll come across plenty of obstacles and secrets that you can't access at first, but you can go back later with all of your new tools and find a bunch of secrets. The game is around five to seven, maybe eight hours on a first playthrough, but if you want to find everything, you're probably looking at nine to 12 hours. And by the time I was done with it, I just went, yeah, that's really one of the best Metroidvanias ever. Like, there was another fantastic Metroidvania this year, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. That game is also really good, but it's not Animal Well. I was really surprised with how much I like this game, and it's probably my favorite indie game all year. I got no problem recommending it to literally everybody. So here we got another one you probably expected to see on a list like this. It is Metaphor Refantasio. This was made by the studio that made the Persona series, and it really is just as good as the Persona series. Taking place in this really interesting, different kind of fantasy world that really deals with racism, classism, and more than just surface level politics. The world is incredibly fascinating in Metaphor, like it's one of the best aspects. The story in general is really interesting as well. While it starts out simple enough, it becomes very, very complex with its story, and it only gets better and better the more time you put into it. The characters are also really great. There are some fantastic characters in Metaphor. They're just as good as the Persona characters. Like, all of the cast is incredibly lovable, and it truly is nothing short of remarkable. This game's story, vibe, world building, atmosphere, characters, dialogue, voice acting, all of that great stuff. It really is exceptional, and when it comes to the presentation, like the graphical side of things, it is also excellent. This game looks amazing, the menus are just absurdly good looking, like they are crazy stylized. I love how this game looks. When it comes to the aesthetic, the vibe, all of that, 
this game just totally nails it. And then it's a fantastic RPG as well, with some really excellent battles. No, it's not crazy different from the Persona series, but I like the differences here. It does feel different in many aspects. I think the battle system is really great. You get some really awesome party members. I enjoy the way progression is handled in this game, and the pacing. The pacing is really great stuff here. I love how many dungeons there are in this game. There's way more dungeons than the Persona games, and they're actually very well thought out. They're meticulously made, and I've enjoyed every single one I've played in the game. The dungeon design has been a real treat. Outside of the dungeons and battles, I really like what this game's putting down as well, where it does have a calendar system, there's bonds to forge, and you can really learn a lot more about these characters in the world in general. Everything just comes together so well in Metaphor. It's different from Persona, but at the same time, it's somewhat familiar. If you're somebody who likes JRPGs at all and you haven't tried this, I really don't know what you're waiting for. It's one of the best of the year, and I wouldn't be surprised if people say it's one of the best JRPGs of the 2020s. It's legit that good, and it'll totally hold you over until Persona 6 eventually eventually comes out. Oh yeah, and the music goes like crazy in this game. At first I was a little weirded out by it, but the more I played of it, I was just like, damn, this music goes so hard. It is so good. This game, oh, this game is so good. I got to get back to it. I've, I've just been loving it. The more time you put into it, it's just fantastic. And as you get towards the end of the game, it really starts to go crazy in the best of ways. So here's a game I doubt even one person expected to see on a list like this, and that is Ace Attorney Investigations to Prosecutor's Gambit. And I know what you might be thinking, but Jonathan, that's an old game. It came out like 10 plus years ago. How can you have a DS game on a list like this? Yeah, it initially came out in 2011. In Japan, this is the first time the rest of the world is getting the game, and it's also been essentially remade thanks to the Investigations collection, and so I'm treating it as a new release, and after playing all the way through it, this game is nothing short of brilliant. I wasn't totally sure what to expect from this game. Like, I had heard good things about it, but... I'm still relatively new to the Ace Attorney series, and I played through Investigations 1 since they're both on the collection, and I didn't think it was all that. I thought it was just okay. But once I started Investigations 2 and completed the first case, oh yeah, I knew this game was going to be something else, and it absolutely is. From start to finish, this is maybe the best visual novel I've ever played. It's more than just a visual novel. It's also an adventure game. There's plenty of puzzles. You get to actually walk around do your investigations on foot, and there's plenty of other little gameplay segments thrown in here. It's more than just sitting there watching two characters talk to each other and you pressing the continue button over and over. There is plenty of that, but the gameplay is way more involved than any of the other mainline Ace Attorney games, and I think it actually really comes together. But what makes Ace Attorney Investigations 2 as good as it is, is the story, the dialogue, the characters, the motivations, the writing. It's just so unbelievably good in this game. The cast of characters is ridiculously good in this game. Edgeworth is just a fantastic protagonist, but all of the other characters are excellent as well. Literally every single one. All of these characters are exceptionally well written, have some great dialogue, and there are tons, tons of just memorable, interesting moments. The story is beyond memorable. Every single case is crazy memorable. Some of the best cases of the entire Ace Attorney series are right here. There's no bad case. There's not even a mid case. All of the cases are mad good. Every single case is way better than anything the first investigations had. They're unpredictable, they're dramatic, and they're also really funny. This game has a great sense of humor. There are plenty of humorous moments, and I really had no idea where the story was going to go next. Every single time I thought I knew who the culprit was or where things were going, I was wrong. The game did a turnabout on me, and I was just blown away, especially by the time I was done with the game. I was just like, holy shit, Eureka, that was just a fucking crazy good game. And yeah, that's why I give it a 10 out of 10. It is one of those unforgettable experiences that I can recommend to everybody, even if you don't like the Ace Attorney series, if you don't like visual novels, if you don't like just staring at a screen where two characters talk to each other, I implore you to give this game a shot. It might be the game that changes your opinion on those things. It's just one of the most well-written video games I've ever played, and the characters, the character development, and dialogue just go so hard that I really didn't want to play many other games when I was playing this. I was hooked to this game, and it's got a really good length to it. It takes well over 20, 30 hours to finish, and man, it really is actually able to keep that pace up. It keeps things interesting. Nothing really feels like filler, and it all comes together for such an amazing climax. Like, I cannot believe how well this game wraps everything up. It wraps everything up in a nice, neat little bow that just blew me away. 
All right, I don't want to say anything else about this game because I don't want to spoil a single thing. I highly recommend this collection because this game is in it. The first game, yeah, it's okay, but Investigations 2, ooh, one of my favorite experiences all year. And it just makes me so glad I got into this series. So that's it for today's video. Those were some 10 out of 10 experiences I've had in 2024. There were a few other games I wanted to include on here, but I just couldn't recommend them to every single person that breathes air. They might have been a little too niche. More niche than even Ace Attorney. Either way though, these have been some excellent games. This has been a pretty good year in gaming. And yeah, I got a bunch of videos coming up about the games I played in 2024. Let me know down below what some of your favorites have been. I'd love to know how everybody's feeling about these games. And if you made it to this part of the video, the code word is going to be tubular because it's going to be a totally tubular December. We're going to have a great December. I'm going to put out a lot of fun videos and I'm excited for you all to hear about the games I played this year. I'm rambling at this point, so I will talk to you all later. Stay safe, y'all. Bye-bye.